Hello, I'm Michael Campin, a contributing editor with Canadian Home Workshop magazine, and today we're going to take a look at some of the considerations you might want to look at when buying a new router. The laminate trimmer is the smallest router you can buy. These have been used by cabinet makers and countertop shops for years, and they're primarily used for trimming the laminate, laminate off of the substrate as it overhangs the edge. They only spin a quarter inch bit because they're a fairly low power machine, they're light, they're easy to control, and uh, they come with a multiple or multiple variety of bases. This one has a straight base, some of them have a 45 base, and this adjustment mechanism, when you loosen it, off, loosen it off here, this will move the base up and down and allow you some very fine adjustments. This is an ideal router when you're using a dovetail jig. As you place it on the jigs, in this case the Akita, it works the same with the uh, Lee D4R, the Super Jig, or even the Porter Cable Omni Jig. You always have a narrow surface here. And if you're using a large router, such as this three and a quarter horse or three and a half horsepower Triton, they're harder to control as you move them back and forth and in and out of the fingers. In this case, a smaller router is much easier to control easier to balance and when you're done you can just park it off to the side without too much of a problem. If your budget will only support one router, then choose a two and a quarter horsepower model. This provides enough power to do most of the woodworking tasks you're likely to come across in your average project. This router has got uh, two, two locations for the power switch, depending on how far the, the router is mounted in the base. You have this one down here, as well as the one up top here. And uh, this top is nice because if your router is running and you use it in a jig like this, if you take it off and turn it around and set it down, it automatically pushes that up and turns the router off. If you can, choose one that has the multi-base kit. This provides you with a fixed base for use on a dovetail jig and it provides you with a plunge base when you're making inside cuts and you have to plunge the bit into the center of the work. Get out of the fixed base. Put it into the plunge base, and suddenly you have a very versatile router. You plunge it straight down into a cut. You can set your depth stops here, and there's a multitude of settings so that you can return to uh, three preset stops. When using a dovetail jig with a router, it's best to use a fixed base router. And the reason is, if you use a plunge router like this there's a chance, because the dovetail bit is wider at the bottom, below the fingers here, after you finish routing, if you accidentally release the mechanism and raise the router, you'll damage the fingers and possibly the jig, and obviously the bit, the carbide edge. When choosing a router, be sure to choose one that had, accepts both the half inch and quarter inch bits. Most routers will come with two collets. One like this one with a smaller opening takes the quarter inch bits and then the other one has a half inch opening that takes the half inch bits. Quarter inch bits have a tendency to chatter more as you uh, make the cut because they're not as rigid, there's less material and they don't have the mass to resist the vibration. This is especially noticeable when you use the router on a dovetail jig or with a jig like the Lee Mortis and Tenon jig where you make an entire cut in one shot. The Lee and Akita dovetail bits come with an 8 millimeter shaft which is halfway in between the quarter inch and the half inch shaft. To use these you need to buy a separate adapter. You push that into the collet and then put the bit into the adapter. For the really big jobs, the ones where you need maximum power, say you're using hard tropical woods, doing a lot of work long term all day long, you might want to look into a three and a half horsepower router. These have the ability to handle almost anything that you throw at them. Triton's got some great dust collection on it. The hose hooks up directly there and collects most of the dust. A feature that's very handy indeed. Um, very unique plunge mechanism here. Two modes, you can move it up and down. Or wind it up and down. Mounting a router in a cable is a far safer way to use a router. The router is fixed and you bring the work to the router, the workpiece. This Jessam router table is an example of what's available at the top of the line. You have a three and a half horsepower router that was specifically designed by Milwaukee to work with this table and the Jessam router lift. The controls for the router have been moved up front so they're easily accessible. It gives you on-off as well as speed control. 
You don't have to spend $2,000 on a top-of-the-line router table to use a router in a table though. Most routers that are sold nowadays come with a above-the-table adjustment, such as this Triton here. What you do is you take the router, mount it under a standard router plate, and then remove this bottom plate on the router. This allows the end of the adjustment mechanism to fit into the keyway in the plunge mechanism here. As the router is sitting below, you may, you may have to drill a hole in your router mounting plate. This slips in there, and then you simply crank the router up. This is the same feature as this wheel on the Jessam, which also is, is essentially the same item. Tune in again to CanadianHomeWorkshop.com for more great tips from our other contributing editors.